and action. That's pretty amazing because I was trying to get the video. It's Monday, May 6th, 6 at minutes past 6, which is MM666. I don't think that's significant, but anyway, um, and the phone locked up just before I'm like, ooh, doodle, doodle, doodle. Anyway, first of all, it's a, I want to thank all the Alan Holdsworth people on the Unreal Alan Holdsworth page on Facebook. Why? Because you're the kindest people I've ever met. You're just, like, you listen to my video. No one said anything negative to me. You all helped me. You all gave me more information about Alan. And I realised, you know why? Because Alan Holdsworth was a lovely person. It stems, like, no wonder we all like Alan Holdsworth. He, like, I've never heard anyone say, you know, like, you hear stories about rock stars or different musicians, and, like, there's usually, even if someone who's really nice, they always have an off day, and someone goes, oh, he was really, you know, not nice, or whatever. I've never heard a bad Alan Holdsworth story, period, ever, ever. And I think it's because the man was really nice. Now, I'm going to talk about Messi in third mode some more. I'm going to come at it from some different angles. I'm going to try and calm down because I get too excited. I'm, the reason I, I'm, I'm going to come at a different angle, I want to talk about um, Alan. I want to talk about Messi in, but I want to talk more about Alan Holdsworth, and I want to try and give some sort of like background. Now I know lots of you know all of Alan's play. Loads of you can play similar, but there's some things that you're missing. I think I can't do it. But I'm a guitar technician. I've been in a guitar tech for 30 years. If you look at my resume, Lou, it's all no one like Alan. It's all people like Billy Duffy and Lou Reed and Duran Duran and Decole. Um, anyway, whatever. You can see my credentials. Like That's not important. What's important, I grew up in England. I grew up poor in England. I'm not as old as Alan, but Alan's in the north of England. And, he was, yo, and I can tell Alan was poor. He wanted a saxophone. He couldn't afford it. His dad got him a guitar, and he basically said, F you, everyone, I'm going to make the, sax the guitar into a saxophone. Now, there's a few things I want to say about Alan. Um, I want to get to him as a musician, and I want to talk to it to you guys a bit from a different perspective. Then we'll get into the musical theory afters. So I can identify with Alan because I grew up poor. I wanted a guitar. There was one in Woolworths for £18. That's like $18. You know, it's like nothing nowadays. But to me, it was out of the question. I was never going to get it. The re reason I'm saying this is that my first guitar came out of the dustbin. Next door neighbour threw out a guitar. My stepfather retrieved it. It was a frame, frameless guitar, which is a German guitar. But it was, there was nothing on it. It was just the neck and the, and the body. But my uncle had one of the audition guitars from Woolworths. The eight, so we took all the electrics off. Well, I didn't. They did. My, my, step, my uncle Jim did it all. We put my guitar together for me. Then my dad got involved. My dad built the guitar. Now, here's the first thing. Um, this, and it, I'm going to get to Alan. Alan was a tinkerer. Alan made the harness. Alan built things. Alan knew how to use his hands and his head. Alan was a, In that generation, there was no money. My dad used to say to me, Stu, we can't afford it. Either we build it or we modify something that's already exist. You know, find something in, in the garbage. And, we, and he did it with my guitar. Now, check this out. When I was, this hasn't got a trem on it. But when, I was, when he built my guitar, I said to my dad, I said, everyone puts the bar and it goes down. I, can I have a bar that you pull up and it goes, and the, tra like the strings go slack when you pull up? And he goes, yeah, I could build that, no problem. My dad modified the tremolo, so I would go, boom. Now, so that gives you an idea. What I'm trying to get at is Alan, well, Brian May and his dad, Dr. Brian May, sorry, um, and his dad, they both built guitars. Jeff Beck built his own guitars. People didn't have money then. Alan didn't have money. He had to, like, brain it out and build things. His dad obviously was a great musician. And Alan, like me, my dad was so much better than me at everything, so it kind of pisses you off when you're a son. And that's why Alan says in his video... Um, his dad was always around, but he didn't want to ask him. He didn't want to give his dad the... You know, because our dads were so good that we didn't want to go, Dad, can I have your help? I mean, we did lots of times. But there's certain points where we wanted to be independent and think for ourselves. And Alan did that. And that's why he came up with... Di if he'd gone and learnt from his dad, he'd be like the rest of us. And it'd be, you know, terrible. Because Alan figured it out. Right. So let's get with that. Also, Alan's a Yorkshireman. What does that mean? There are three guitarists from Yorkshire that really affected me. Alan Holdsworth, I think it's Ollie Olsen, is, I think he's how you say his name, and Bill Nelson. And they all came from Yorkshire and they all liked the bitter. 
the bitter drink from Yorkshire. There's Sam Smith Bitter there. That's being pulled from a, a well that was sunk in 1765, I think it is, 1760 some odd. That means that, you know when people say, oh, what's in the water? There's something in the water there. All three of those guys drank beer, you know, um, or Boddington's Bit, all these beers from England. Similarly, Guinness in Ireland. Guinness, the reason that tastes so good in Ireland, it comes up through the peat bogs. It's all about filtration. Now, you're going, what's this got to do with Alan? Alan really loved beer. He made beer pumps. I'm trying to get to the fact that Alan was a practical man. He could practically do anything, and clearly he saw the music system, and it, what I'm trying to get at is his thinking, like my thinking, like my dad's thinking, is... You see all the superfluous bullshit, you cut everything down and you get down to the fundamentals of something and you say, what actually makes this work? Alan saw that, he looked at the system, what makes this work? How can I modify it and make it better? My dad, if anything broke, my dad fixed everything. He's a jeweler by trade, a, a diamond mounter. But my dad was a mechanic, he could build anything. Anything broke, he took it to my dad. My, he re repaired my guitar. My guitar was better sounding after he repaired it. I snapped the headstock off, he put it all back on. You should have seen it, it was amazing what he did. And it sounded better. People don't get this as well. Instruments often the Les Pauls, like back in the 70s, Mick Ronson, all those guys, they're like, you want your guitar to fall over, you want the headstock smashed off. When they put it back on and they glue it, it's way stronger. The joint is stronger than the actual wood. The sustain's improved and the stability is there. So anyway, back to Alan. Right, Alan Holdsworth, I want to show you something now. Oliver Messiaen, we're talking Messiaen, five and four, nine note scales. Five and four, nine note scales. Alan Holdsworth often, not all the time, played eight note scales. Do you see what I'm doing there? Messiaen is using 10 digits because he's a piano player, an organ player, he's an organist. Listen to him playing the organ in the cathedral. Um, Remind me about, come back to me, listen to me. So if I did a live thing we could like, and we were talking, I'd say, remind me to talk about reverbs in spaces. Alan, it is super important for Alan's sound. Um, okay, so Alan, eight note scales. So you go, well, and this is a problem with mu musicians. They, know, they always think, oh, we've got to do, you know, whatever it is, a one, two, three, four, five, six, and a sharp six, seven, an octave to get, you know, but, but I don't think that way. And that, I don't think Alan did, and I think I can prove that. Alan has some scales, which there's one, which is the major scale, and he adds a flat, so you go, yeah, he added flat seven. No, don't think like that. Major scale and mixolydian scale. Do all of the triads from both scales, then stack all the fourths from both scales, and then overlap them. Then you'll start to think like Alan. Alan, the, here's the other thing, Alan was playing tetrachords. He didn't know it, but Alan's gone back before the Roman Empire. He's gone back to the Greeks, like I have, with Pythagorean, all that stuff I'm telling you about. Triangles and diamonds, which is a square. If you turn that, turn the diamond on its side, it's a square. It's all geometry. I, at school, I was rubbish at school. I don't, I'd love to know what Alan was like at school. I wouldn't mind betting that he wasn't good at school, or he was brilliant, like he was like some brilliant mathematician, or he was like me, couldn't get anything, he could... I could do woodwork, metalwork. I built a Martin D28 replica when I was 15. I made all the knobs for my little telecast, my little guitar. I wanted telecast knobs, so I made no. I did all that stuff, and I bet Alan did stuff like that. I bet he's because he was poor. We had to build things ourselves. Our dads would do it, you know. Brian May, Brian May machined a lot of stuff up at school. Um, anyway, well, stay with. Alan, stay with Alan, stay with Alan, stay with Alan. Eight note scales, yes. So do eight note scales. Don't think of them as an eight note scale. Think as two seven note scales. Now you've got 14 notes to deal with and you've got more permutations. Now this is a very big giveaway with Alan. Alan just looked at things as patterns and he just ran sequences. Here's a big giveaway. The tetracord, I was doing tetracords. Tetracord, what is a tetracord? It's just a walk up to, how do you get to the four? Like this is Johnny Cash. When I was young, I'd go, That's a Johnny Cash walk up to me. You know, you can, it used to be big gap, big gap, little gap. Right, is it? If, so if you think in terms of like big gap, big gap, little gap, big gap, big gap, big gap, little gap, which is a major scale, but you split, Alan splits everything into four. Why? He's got four fingers on his hand. Yeah, we can see him do that on the neck sometimes, make a big chord, but primarily he's thinking four digits. Most people on the planet, like over the last whatever years, are thinking three notes per string. 
Alan would see that as an inefficiency. Like, why don't you... It, Alan said, play the major scale in four notes per string. That's tetrachords. And you'll realise, if you play the major scale, the first two patterns are the same. Tone type, big gap, big gap, little gap. Big gap, big gap, bit, little gap. The next one is the Dorian scale, which is big gap, little gap, big gap. Big gap, little gap, big gap on the next two strings. And you go across, the next one's Phrygian, I think, is like little gap. I, I, I just play it now. I don't think what the big gap, I just kind of like know it. And here's a great thing. When you're flying along like Alan, and you're thinking about this, I'm just, all right, I'm just in, turning the computer off. Um, when you're flying along like Alan, you're, I don't know, I can't say this, but if I just start improv improvising, I can't do it like Alan, I can't do it at the same speed. I'm not Alan, nor do I want to be. Alan's Alan. Now, I know that all of you want to be Alan and you try and copy him, and that's great, but what you don't realise, um, there's a guitarist from a band called Marvin, called Danny, he's a lovely guy, I shook his hand, I met him in New York, he taught me about secondary dominance and stuff, which became very obvious, that uh, was bollocks, you know, like this fucking 251 stuff. You know, Alan also didn't like that. He, he was like, all these jazzers think that they're doing improv. It's the same progressions over and over again. They've sat and rehearsed like certain scales and stuff. Alan didn't think like that. He didn't want to be that. He didn't want to be associated with that. He wanted new music, his own music. You know that Alan didn't do standard chords. He basically was doing sco uh, scale, scale, scale yala, chords. I can't talk about it. You know what I mean? He's taking chords from the scale. And you know that he's doing them like Vic. Here's another Alan tip. Right. When, you wanna, when you're first starting, Alan always played in the little pool. What do I mean by that? The guitar is like, there's the big pool from the nut to the 12th fret. From the 12th fret to the bridge, it's the little pool. So if you're going to do Alan chords where you've got a stretch. I can't do it. I'm leaning in. But you know when you're doing dissonant chords or those lovely runs that he practiced or I would believe because he's such a lot... Alan is so logical, he's so smart, he just does things the most logical way. He's just like my dad, my dad was like this. I just said to, uh, about, you know, not that Alan does this picking thing, I'll do that later, you don't need to know about the picking thing, because Alan didn't really do that, and I'm really kind of trying to address the Alan crowd. Right, so, four notes per string is an Alan Holdsworth thing. Here's the next thing, Alan Holdsworth is two people in one when he plays. Why do I say that? Because when he plays, look at his body language, Man, I want you to see Alan when he's, when he's off on one, when he's out doing the improv. Look at his body. He is playing a saxophone. His body is emulating the breath work of a sax player. And his phrasing is very much like his body is saying, I, I just watch him and I go, he's playing sax. Not, he's playing it brilliantly on guitar. Um, I'll tell you what I think Alan would have done well with. And if I'd met him, I would have recommended this to him. This is a Pete Cornish pedal, it's called the Death Pedal. And what, why I would have recommended it is it's got three germanium diodes in it that cas cascade into each other. Um, it, was made, it came about because of Lou Reed. Lou Reed blew up two tweed, he blew, blew up a tweed deluxe and he blew up a, a tweed champ, both of which I now own. Yes, lucky me. He forced them onto my hands. So, but Alan, I think, would have loved this pedal. Why? Because you can get, you know, the early fuzz boxes were meant to emulate brass instruments, trumpets, saxophones. I know Alan was always craving the, tri to the tone, and we all do. Alan ended up with digital, with Yamaha. They're fucking awesome. The Yamaha stuff is great. I don't have a problem with digital. My first ever influence was Mark Bolan. And that's not a digital wham. It's an H and H wham. H and H was built 18 miles from where I grew up in Cambridge, which is where Dick Gilmore and all the guys came from. Anyway, these H and H amps were everywhere in England at the time, and Mark Bolan used that. But he also used what? He used a range master going into a tone bender. The tone benders were quite dark, dark, and the, and the uh, range master were really bright. And he clearly didn't have the guitar turned up all the way, and Alan didn't turn the guitar up all the way. So I, I can hear all these things. I think that would have, if I'd met Alan, and I was so close one day, I missed him by that much. My friend at SIR, I came down the stairs from Lou Reed's locker, and my mate Will Dial, number one, I call him. I could see he was like in semi shock. I went, dude, what's happened? He went. Alan Holsworth was just here. You've missed him. Run out. He's in the street. Go and see him. I'm like, I can't run out. And What are you going to say to Alan Holsworth? Dude, you're Alan Holsworth. He knows who he is. Anyway, he said, I shook his hand. I said, how? he seemed like humble. What, why, how did you even say that? He said, he came in. I said, you're Alan Holsworth. He said, am I? 
It, like Alan's a joker. Alan's got a great sense of humour. He's an Englishman. He's you know he's got. I know. Uh, you know what? I really feel like I know Alan, but not from his guitar playing. I think his personality, and that's why all you guys on this thing are all nice people because if you like Alan and like his music, I think that's. I think that says more about the man than the music. Um, anyway, so Will, Will says, you're Alan Holdsworth. He goes, I'm I guess. And Will said, thank you. And he put his hand out and said, Alan was like reluctant. He said, what's that for? He said, for being Alan Holdsworth. And he went, oh, okay. And he shook his hand, made, his, made Will's day, you know. I was pissed off because I was a minute late. I missed Alan. But I would have been like, Mr. Alan, have you tried this? You know, I'm a guitar tech. I'm always trying to... You know, Alan, you've got a great tone. Have you ever, have you ever thought about germanium diodes? You know, blah. I would have given him the old spill. And Alan, Alan being Alan, he would have gone, hmm, ah. You know how Alan does that thing where he goes, ha ha, hmm. You know, because us Englishmen, we're quirky. We think about things and we fuck around all the time. So I feel like I know Alan. Anyway, let's get back to Alan. I told you he was two musicians in one. He's a sax player. You can tell by his rig, he clicks a button and he becomes a keyboard player. Look at his body language, he plays these lovely chords. Learn all your Alan Holsworth chords in the little pool between the 12th fret and the bridge. Learn everything Alan Holsworth there first and gradually work your way down. Otherwise, you like me, I always try to do everything down the bottom end and fucked all my hand up. Um, so that's tip number one. Do Alan Holsworth stuff up there. Remember Alan Holsworth, four notes per string, do your major scale. You'll see Dorian's the next one and Phrygian's the next one, I think. Learn that the Dorian scale is a is a palindrome. It's the same intervals going up and down. Learn that the harmonic major is also a palindrome going up and down. It's a root, flat two, a major third, a four, a five, a flat six. Alan likes a flat six, as does Paul McCartney. Flat six and a major six together in a scale. Remember I said eight note scales? Look at your modes, start overlapping them. Play your modes, like one I like to do is um, obviously Aeolian, the natural minor, with the Dorian, you know? It's duh, it's like obvious, it's all, anyway. It's not about me, it's about Alan, and I've, not got, I've got limited time, and I want you to get the most out of my stupid head about my take on Alan. Here's the first thing. Alan, why you can't get the tone, Alan's a violinist. Now, when you play violin, your chin is on the instrument and your hands are there. First of all, look at what it does to your hands and your arm. Your arm's under tension because there's a twist. Now, you're going, well, who cares? Your guitar strings are under tension. Your muscles are under tension. It's going to affect the tone. Look at Alan's fingers. He he's, does little tunnels. Like he's, he's, And watch his... Alan's vibrato, the only thing I would like to steal, not steal, but if I saw Alan, I'd say, Alan, would you mind if I borrowed your vibrato, especially your little finger? Watch Alan play that fucking little finger vibrato, man. It sounds fucking magnificent. I don't need to do all the stuff. He can do that. I just want to like get notes and make him sing like Alan. At the, when he does a phrase and he just does that thing at the end, don't you think that's the best thing ever? I do. You probably don't. You probably want to just keep doing that. But uh, anyway, so violin on the chin, that means that this ear hears close, the frequency, but this ear is hearing a reflection. Remember I said messienne and reverb, I'm coming round to that. Jimi Hendrix played in the toilet for hours, why? Because of reverb. Now, Alan and me grew up poor, those toilets would be small, these are gonna be short reflections, that's why he ended up with those Yamaha delay lines with very short delays, because he'd grown up knowing full well that if you've got a nice fundamental note, and then you have these really short delays, you, it, you, it makes an electric instrument, which could be actually dead, sound like a fucking cello or a vi or what? A violin. He's a violinist. Duh. So, body language. Look, always look, even if it's not Alan, look at musicians, how they play, how they stand. You know, you're never going to sound like Leslie West because you're not huge like Leslie West. That's a bit... Body and the interaction of the instrument, all this learning the, the modes and learning the, what's going on, that's only a part of it. Learn about the body language. Read it. Read, you know, Alan, when he clicked on clean, he was two extremes. Extremely clean with that beautiful shimmery um, chord sound that he gets. And the reason he did that was dissonance. He likes dissonance, but he had to sweeten it a little bit because he realised when he was playing violin when he was young, I say he realised, I don't know, I'm, a, I'm an empath. Empath. I'm empathetic. I'm putting myself in Alan's place. I don't play violin, if, but the first time I picked up a viola was Avin Kane's viola, and he said, play it. And I just played it. I play, played, and he said, people can't get a note out. You just, you must play I said, no, it's the first time I've ever used a bow. This is the other thing with Alan Holdsworth technique. When you play a stringed instrument, I've got a cello now, 
there's a delay, there's a lag. So when Alan's playing this lag thing, he naturally had that and then he adapted it with a pick. And as I did in other videos, I've shown you there are all these harmonics. So you play the fundamental on one note and the pick just hits a little harmonic. That's why Alan's got so much so good tone. First of all, he's timing differently to most people because he comes from violin strings. Second of all, he knows those harmonics. But third of all, that's why he has all the delays the way he does. Because I think he practiced in the toilet like Hendrix. And when you play in the toilet, the reverb, this is why when as a kid, I thought I was a great singer. I used to sing in the toilet. I thought it was brilliant. Then when I came out, I was like, you're out of tune, dude. You're awful. Um, which I am, but I'm working on it. Um, so listen, I'm going fast because I know I'm giving so much information here. And I've not even got to scales yet, have I? I've not even talked about Messiaen. Mess well, I have digits. Ten digits, piano player. Stanley Jordan, all these people. You know, I don't like guitar that sounds like piano myself, personally. It's just me. I, I actually like Django. Django uses two fingers. My favourite way of playing that I'm working on is Django with Jimi Hendrix's thumb. Hendrix played with the thumb over the top. Look at Hendrix's shoulder. That's because he, he started off with a thumb over the top. When you start and you first, you're doing, watch Hendrix play. I know he's not Alan Holdsworth, I know it's a Holdsworth group, but this is the other thing I wanted to say to you guys. Could, would you mind if I do videos where I talk about Messian and different things that are not specifically Alan Holdsworth, that maybe you could look at and then you could write and say, you know what, Stu, this isn't really applicable. And if it's that's the case, we just bin it, throw it away. But the reason I want you guys, because you guys seem to be really open-minded. I try to get my videos. I'm on a, a Facebook um, music theory thing. They, they didn't even write back and say, oh, we can't put that up because this, that, and the other. I think I just freaked them out. I mean, fair enough. Look at me. I'm mental. Um, anyway, so that's an appeal to all you Alan Holzer fans. Um, I intended to talk so much about the actual third, the Messiaen, the Cycle of Fifths. Here's the last part in thought for you. We all look at the Circle of Fifths as a circle, don't we? Um, I, got, I, I can't look at the camera and do it. I've got to always remember anti-clockwise, so that it's clockwise for you. So we're going clockwise for the Cycle of Fifths. We go anti-clockwise for... Here's a, you know the thing for rule of thumb? Do you know where that comes from? No, you don't. Put your hand in front of your face. I'm going to do it side on so that you can see what's going on, but you should do it in front of your face. That's going clockwise. So, C at the top, C, D, E, F, G. G is the fifth, put G in the thumb. G, A, B, C, D, D in the thumb. Right, and if you move that round, C at the top, G is at one o'clock, it's got one sharp. D is at two o'clock, two sharps. A is at three o'clock, three sharps. Easy peasy, rule of thumb. I don't use it anymore, thrown it away. Learn it, throw it away, just go. Yeah, that, I think Alan did that. I think he went through every poem. He said in his video, there's a video. One of you guys redid the video. Thank you so much. It, the old one was blur. It's horrible. The new one's great. And also, I think there's a guy there called Chip. I think Chip was a guitar tech or something. He knows too much stuff. To He's like he's close to the source. Um, I'm a guitar tech for Lou Reed for nine years. I, you know, I've traveled. I've been 30 years in New York. Uh, you know, guitar techs get closer to the actual nitty gritty. Actually, in Alan's case, I don't think that's true. I think Alan knew more than anyone and knew all about his rig. But he obviously, at some point, relinquished that. You know, he had to, you know, because he wanted to focus on just the music. So you you get a guitar tech or someone, a friend that you really trust. They listen to you, and they've got to be really detail oriented. This guy, I think it's Chip. If it's not Chip, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't remember names. But whoever you are, you've got all the you did the pickup wiring, all the stuff. Thank you. This is the shit that we need. I don't want to sound like Alan, but I just want to know what... I need to just know what he did and what he was thinking like. And I think I'm close to you know, knowing who that man was. Is. He lives on forever. Um, his music will. And here's the other thing. Alan, when he was on the road with Marvin, he said... I'm going to try and do Northern accent, but I can't. He said, I wish those bookers would bloody um, learn about themselves instead of trying to figure out who I am. Or, no, in, I wish they'd figure out who they were instead of trying to figure out how I am. He doesn't want you copying him. He doesn't want you. When you copy an artist and you you know, you put all your into it, your, your soul, your personality diminishes. You think, oh, I'm getting like Alan Holdsworth. Alan Holdsworth will tell you, learn your own shit. Like, transpose, transcribe, whatever you want to do. Learn it, but take it and take it. It's got to be you. You've got to become your own person. So... 
see, part of being a guitar tech is psychology. You have to tell people in a really diplomatic way. You can't just say something to Lou Reed that you really mean. You've got to be really clever and cagey and say, you've often got to say things to artists so that they think that they came up with it. It's a very, it's a great trick to do. Jedi mind trick. Right, I didn't go the other way, did I? I did cycle of fifths going that way. On the fourths, you lose the thumb. So you go C, F, B, E. But you know that's B flat, because you, you had B going the other way, so it's got to be B flat. I don't ever say B flat or E flat. I just do, you know, C, C, D, E, F. F is the fourth. Sorry, I was doing the cycle of fifths. I was already one step ahead of myself. C, D, E, F. F becomes the new point. It's the pointer. It's pointing in a direction. It's on the right hand. You're going to go anti-clockwise. So F, B, E, A. I know that that's B flat. I know that's E flat. I know that's A flat. I don't need to do the... If I start going F, B flat, E flat, A flat, it gets more confusing. It's easy. Anyway, that's the rule of thumb going clockwise. Rule of pointer, rule of finger, something to give you a pointer goes anti-clockwise. I don't know if that's going to help you. Maybe it won't. Um, I've got loads of stuff, I can teach you loads of theory stuff if you're into it. And I'm going to need your comments to guide me on, I'm trying to become a guitar teacher. I know a lot of stuff, I'm not a great teacher. Um, I've got loads of information, I'm like a rabid animal when I, I'm trying to unload on this stuff. Um, maybe if I could do a live thing, if I could get enough people where I could relax and just, I'm, my phone would run out any minute now and that, that's it, I'm done. So I'm going to just sign off now and I'm going to say I knows you knows I knows you knows I knows you. Oh, last thing. Learn this. Um, Alan is a genius. I was told I was a genius by Lou Reed. Now think about this. We're all genius. We're all genius. The word genie us, genie in the bottle, genie, magical little genie, us, genie us, all of us are genius. Plural of genius is genie I. I am a genius. You are, look yourself in the eye and tell yourself you're a genius. You, Alan's a genius, you're a genius. We're all genius and we're all here to help each other. I'm on a mission now to try and teach people about the frequencies and about the music. And trying to teach, I'm out every day doing stand up, making people laugh. It's making me strong. I've realised I'm meant to be a character in the street making people laugh. I'm going to get, st I'm going to do stand up comedy in New York if I can slow the fuck down and talk properly. Anyway, sorry for the swearing. I'm an Englishman in New York, like Sting. Sting my ass. I've met Sting on a couple of times. Well, one occasion, it's quite funny actually. I could tell Sting stories, or I could tell all stories about people I've met. But this is an Alan Holdsworth thing. Um, but, you know, sometimes I'm going to tell music theory things that will relate to Alan, but it won't be specific to Alan. So you have to let me know. And if you delete it, it's fine. But please just say, Stu, that's, it's just not appropriate. You don't have to make me feel bad and say, you know, whatever. Just say, dude, it's not working for us at this time. Maybe try this other group. If you're in other groups, try and share my videos. Not because, I mean, I hate all that fucking ring the bell shit. Pavlov's dog. Oh, the bell rings. I'm going to get a treat. Mind control, oh fuck off. I'm not, I'm not about that. Anyway, and I think I'm, maybe I've said too much. Triangle, I knows you, knows I knows you. Um, I owe you, Alan Holsworth, I owe you, I knows you. There's, I find connections with everything. I'm a guitar tech that sees connections in everything. And I can do more Alan Holsworth things, but I've already given you loads and loads of information that's gonna make a lot of you play very differently, I hope. And I hope it brings you you know, what you want. But remember, Alan doesn't want you copying him. I mean, it's nice that we keep his music alive, but let's keep playing the original. Let's remember him. We need more, as much video of him doing things. I want to see more video of his family. I want to know who he is personally, because I want to know how close I am to guessing who Alan Oldsworth is. I think he's a loving father. I think he's a great man. I think he was a great friend. I think he was fun to be around. He might not have been the best husband, but nor was I. I gave my, you know, I went out on the road and stuff. I, I, I've put my focus into music because music's my first love. It always was and always will be. And unfortunately, some people don't like being second best, you know. Um, anyway, that's too much. Out of here. Peace. Whatever you do. Love you all. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you.